Hi, I'm Magnus Walker and top of the morning to you and welcome to the Legends Room in the vault at the Peterson Automotive Museum here in LA where I'm honored to have my very own UO10 retrospective exhibition and collection. So come on in with me and I'll take you for a quick tour to show you around what you're gonna see when you come in. So every one of the 10 cars that you're going to see behind me has a story. But for me, if I could only keep one without a shadow of a doubt, it's my 1971 911T. The car known as 277, the car I've done all my spirited drives in, my many, many track days over the year. This one just fits me like my favorite pair of old shoes or my favorite pair of old jeans. I'm just comfortable in it. The sum of its parts is it's nothing special. It's running somewhat antiquated technology, Weltmeister adjustable sway bars, 22 and 28 millimeter torsion bars. The heart and soul of this car is a hot rod built 2.8 liter twin plug motor. But this car has got all the patina, scars, wear and tear and character. It's the car I've done the most miles in. It's the car like I say I'm most comfortable with. So make sure you take some time and check out my favorite car, car number 277. This really all started with Tamir Moscovici's award-winning short documentary film, Urban Outlaw, that debuted October 15th of 2012. What you're gonna see here is 10 of my favorite P cars, and the front engine, mid-engine, and rear engine, both air and water cooled. These are my sport purpose, streetable track cars with an art inspired livery. So my goal when choosing the 10 cars to display down here at the Euro 10 exhibition was to show variety. Sure, when you think of Porsche, you may think of the 911, but to me, I'm all about sport purpose, streetable, fun Porsche cars. So right here is my 1980 924 Carrera GT. You know, the one with the engine in the front that's water cooled with the transaxle super well balanced. Porsche only made 406 of these. And this car has an interesting story. I got an email from a guy in Australia who's jokingly said, hey, I have a car I think you should own. And I actually had a 924 Carrera GT on my wish list, but I wasn't chasing it aggressively. Long story short, this car had been in Japan, went to Sydney where I acquired it and shipped it halfway around the world to LA. So make sure you check out one of my favorite water-cooled Porsches, my 1980 924 Carrera GT. Another one of my faves is my 1973 1.7 liter 914 art car. I could ramble on about this for a long, long time, but it has a punk rock rattle can aesthetic that Felix Holst and I did over three days. The car then went to the SEMA show in Vegas where it was perhaps the first 914 ever to be displayed, especially at the Mobile One booth. Continuing with my art car theme, make sure you check out my 1995 993. This is the only 993 I've owned. I acquired it from my buddy Robert Angelo. He owned it before and he did the Blue Riviera wrap. I then painted the hood black and had my buddy Gino of Vader Graphics do this vinyl graphic application. But make sure you check out the big screen because I'll show you how I actually taped it off with paper tape before Gino did the vinyl application. So 99. 3, 1995. This car holds a special place in my heart. It's the 310th 911 ever built, VIN number 300, 310. So 65, built late 64, and originally delivered to Brumos Porsche down in Jacksonville, Florida. This is a car that I chased for a very, very long time. Today, it's got what I would call a gentleman's racer livery that you can see here with a sport purpose theme. So it's a hot rod, early 65, two liter 911. Here's my 78 SCHR for hot rod, three liter, narrow bodied, IROC front bumpers and ducktail. This one was built on a budget about eight, nine years ago with the goal of not spending much money, but having a lot of fun. So check it out. It's got some used Momo seats that I bought for 500 bucks and I covered in some leftover tartan. 
and a few other interesting things. This car just goes to show you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to have fun in a Porsche, just like the 914 over there. An awesome photo of 277 on the Sixth Street Bridge shot a couple of weeks ago by Larry Chan. You'll get to see my 199964 and my 67 SRT. These are the pinnacle of my sport purpose streetable track builds. These are the cars with the louvered fenders that my buddy Rod Emery helped out on. Here's my most performance oriented build to date, my 199964. This one has performance modifications in the form of a 3.8 RS spec 993 motor and a whole lot of aesthetic body modifications from the louvered fenders through the fender gas filler, channeled hood, channeled roof, early turbo tail, rain gutter delete, R inspired integrated turn signals and outlaw 17 inch wheels rolling on sticky Pirelli tire with KW coilover suspension and Brembo club race brakes because sometimes you gotta stop. So here's another car that was in the 2020 film Urban Outlaw. This one's on a dolly painted primer gray with a flat black hood and an orange bumper. But that was back in 2012. 10 years later, the car is finally finished. It's a 67 SRT with a potent 2.5 liter twin plug motor that dynoed at 271 horsepower on pump gas. So you gotta remember, short wheelbase, narrow body, no aero, not a lot of stick, but 271 horsepower with a close ratio five speed box with a limited slip rear. Plus a whole bunch of modifications painted in a rhodium silver metallic with Minerva blue and a slate gray bumper by my buddy Matt Bound down in LBC. So you may be wondering why there's a rusty old fender attached to the wall. Well, this is the very first louvered fender that Rod Emery and I ever stamped. This was the very first sample right here on the wall. These louvered fenders were something that I first did back in 2014 on this, my 67 SRT. You know the car, the short wheelbase 2.5 twin plug. The same process was used over here on perhaps my most performance oriented build to date, my 1990 964. If you also walk back this way, you'll see a 2.4S engine on display and various other bits and pieces from my collection. You'll also see the newest Porsche I own on display, my 2004 996 GT3. So here's the first water-cooled 911 I ever bought. That was back in 2016. My buddy Matt Bound also painted the Brumos inspired side stripe and flat black hood. This is one of my favorites. It covers all the bases, ticks all the boxes and engages all the sensors. Next to one of my favorite cars, the very first US 930 Turbo ever sold. That's right, the 1976 930 VIN number 015, a lifelong LA car. I've told the story quite a few times how I first fell in love with Porsche with a white martini turbo as a 10 year old in 1977. This is not that car. That was delivered to Bob Smith Porsche here in Hollywood within five miles of where I'm standing. I'm the fourth owner, it's never been titled outside of California, and my buddy, Marty Materian, has worked on it for the past 25 years for the prior two owners. Now also part of what the goal is here at the Peterson Museum down in the vault is basically me bringing my garage from downtown LA into the museum. Everything that you see here on the wall representing 277 is stuff that people had sent me over the past 10 years. The art wall starts with Tamir's award-winning short documentary film, Urban Outlaw. There's also a letter that I received from Porsche in 2013 after they'd seen the film and invited me to take a tour of the factory. But perhaps one of the things I'm most proud about in this exhibition is all the artwork that has been sent in from renderings of 277 on post-its to kids' drawings, to paintings, to designs by Porsche designers on the back of a napkin at the Standard Hotel. Make sure you check this one out. My buddy Amitya Borkart drew this in 2013 when he thought 277 would be a speedster. He, at the time, he was actually working on the 991 Anniversary Speedster Edition, which kind of may or may not have been inspired by 277, so check that out. And look at everything else on the wall. This is literally artwork that I took off the wall in my garage 
and actually just hung it here at the Peterson. Something that hadn't been done before in the Legends Room. This is the fifth exhibition in the Legends Room, and if you've seen the four before, you will remember there was no artwork hanging on the wall. So make sure you take a little beat, walk down the wall, all the way to the end, and maybe you'll be inspired just like I am, because inspiration is all around. Here on the big screen, you're gonna see a retrospective of 10 years worth of disruptive videos, starting with Tamir Moscovici's award-winning film Urban Outlaw, parts of my 2014 TED Talk, and various other collaborations that have happened over the past 10 years. A perfect example, if you walk this way, is my collaboration with Hot Wheels. Believe it or not, what started in 2016 with just one car has now led to over 30 cars that you'll see here on display in the case. A couple of years into this relationship, the cool dudes at Hot Wheels said, hey, are you interested in doing some non-Porsches? I said, sure, because it's a creative process. So if you're a Hot Wheels fan, make sure to check this out. We all have a Hot Wheels story, whether you're two years old or 100 years old. In this case over here, you'll also see Dirt Don't Slow You Down. My autobiography that came out in 2017 was on London Times top 10 bestseller list. There's six different editions in three different languages. This tells the story in more detail from me growing up in Sheffield, England, all the way on this continuous journey right here to downtown LA. So check out Dirt Don't Slow You Down. Make sure to check out the display of my Momo wheels. This came out in 2015. I'm the first non-professional race car driver in Momo's history to have their own signature steering wheel. Mine was inspired by my favorite Momo Pratipo and the thick grit Jackie Stewart wheel. But I did something a little bit different. I hand distressed the leather. And perhaps a couple of my favorite things over here in the corner. So part of the Euro 10 exhibition is showcasing, literally in a showcase, some cool collaborations that I've been able to do over the years. The perfect one is perhaps the most recent one, my favorite, my Nike 277 collaboration with a pro skater of shot wear. There's also my 2014 collaboration with 1552. These are the guys that do all the wheels for Ken Block. We reinterpreted the classic Fuchs wheel. You'll see this wheel on half of the cars here at the Euro 10 display. Definitely make sure every case or display that you see on the wall Make sure you come on over, like I'm about to do, right here with the Nike 27 set of shot dunk. And there's a little QR code right here. All you gotta do is scan it, and you'll get to hear me ramble on, talking about what's on display. One of the things that I'm most proud about with the Euro 10 exhibition is the fact that all 10 cars that you're gonna see were driven to the Peterson Museum from my garage in downtown LA. Usually cars that are on display at the museum roll off a trailer and for the most part are just pushed into the exhibition room. Every single car here was driven and backed into the location that you're gonna see them. So whilst you're down here in the vault, make sure you get a shot of yourself next to Willow and I after you've read the UO10 description. This Willow may not be here in real life, but she'll be right there on the wall. So don't forget, point and click. So the exhibition starts October 15th runs through January 31st, 2023, which just happens to be the 75th anniversary of Porsche. So put the pedal to the metal, get on down to the Peterson Museum, get yourself a ticket to the Legends Room in the vault, and cheers and rock on. I'm Magnus Walker, and thank you for your support.